वेलकम टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न हाउ टू परफॉर्म क्लोज रिडक्शन टेक्निक फॉर अ सुपरा कंडायलर फ्रैक्चर ऑफ द डिस्टल ह्यूमरस अ फोर इयर ओल्ड गर्ल प्रेजेंटेड टू द टू द इमरजेंसी रूम विद हिस्ट्री ऑफ फॉल ऑन एन आउटस्ट्रेस हैंड विद स्वेलिंग डिफॉर्मिटी पेन ऑफ अ लेफ्ट एल्बो इट वॉज अ क्लोज इंजरी विद इंटैक्ट डिस्टल न्यूरोवैस्कुलर स्टेटस एंड एक्सरे वॉज ऑर्डर्ड एंड हेयर इज द ए पी व्यू ऑफ द पेशेंट एंड वी कैन विजुअलाइज अ फ्रैक्चर इन द सुपरा कंडायलर एरिया द लैटरल एक्सरे गिव्स मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द फ्रैक्चर हेयर वी कैन सी दैट द फ्रैक्चर इज अ कंप्लीट फ्रैक्चर एंड अ डिसप्लेस फ्रैक्चर नाउ बिकॉज ऑफ द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द डिसप्लेसमेंट ऑफ द डिस्टल फ्रैगमेंट एज इट हैज मूव पोस्टीरियरली हेयर the diagnosis of an extension type of a supracondylar fracture is made and this uh, fracture doesn't have any contact with the uh, the distal fragment doesn't have any contact with the proximal fragment so this will be a gartland's type 3 supracondylar fracture of the distal humerus now i shall demonstrate the close reduction and the k wiring technique for the same the child is the the child was taken to the operation theater and given general anesthesia the patient is placed supine on the operating table with the hand on an arm table now the first thing that we do is we give attraction in extension and uh, the traction is given uh, can be given by one person here my left hand is in the axilla giving the counter traction and with the right hand i'm holding the wrist and giving the traction the traction has to be given for a period of 2 to 5 minutes in order to disengage the fragments so here i am asking my assistant to hold the arm so as to give the counter traction now once the enough counter traction has been given a milking technique can be done so as to disengage the fracture from the uh, from the brachialis muscle after this uh, one has to do correction of the medial or the lateral translation and varus valgus deformity here i am doing the correction of the medial and lateral translation now once we have completed uh, this traction milking technique and correction of the medial lateral translation it is now time to correct the posterior translation and angulation as you can see that my left hand i am grasping uh, the distal humerus such that my fingers are overlying the anterior uh, fragment while as my thumb is uh, pushing the olecranon and the distal fragment anteriorly and uh, and uh, while doing that i will be slowly flexing the elbow and pronating the forearm the pronation of forearm helps in a locking of uh, the fracture in posterior medial type of fractures now here i have flexed the elbow and you can see while flexing i have pronated the forearm as uh, this as you can see that the wrist of the child can easily touch the shoulder this is a sign that the reduction is complete now i will take a shoot through image of the fracture and you, see, you can see that uh, this is called as the jones view of the supracondylar fracture and you can see that both the medial and the lateral supracondylar ridges have been restored the both the columns um, have been restored and it looks as a, a well aligned uh, reduction also you can see that the olecranon fossa is also an oval shaped uh, uh, thing that is visible on this shoot through x ray now what we'll uh, try to do is uh, we will try to take a lateral view of the forearm here both the shoulder along with the locked uh, forearm and a wrist is uh, rotated together externally so as to give get a lateral view here you can see the position of the of the elbow joint so here is the lateral view of the of our patient and here we can drop an anterior humeral line which crosses the distal fragment in the middle one third so this is a good quality reduction that we have achieved in the lateral view now we will place our k wires uh, here i'll be putting my first k wire from the lateral uh, cortex so this will be the lateral cortex and palpating the uh, bony projection and once i have reached it with small bursts 
and entering into the distal humerus from distal fragment into the proximal fragment. Now, uh, with a tactile feedback during pin insertion is important to confirm the intraosseous position of the pin. So the first pin has been placed and we have taken a C-arm view and after that another pin will, will be put in the same manner just parallel to the first wire that I have put. Here again I am palpating the, uh, the bony prominence over which our pin will enter. I will try to put the pins parallel to each other. So this will be the second pin that I am entering. This will be a 1.8 mm key wire that I put. So once uh, the bony this pin has been uh, achieved, here I am drilling the K wire and once the second cortex has been achieved, I will remove the, detach the drill. So once two K wires have been, have gone, uh, we take a confirmation view. Here is the AP view and here you can see both the wires look uh, parallel to each other and we have uh, maintained the reduction that we had achieved. So again, a lateral view to confirm the two wires and uh, again here the uh, reduction looks quite decent in the lateral view as well so once uh, two wires have gone in now i can extend the elbow now once the elbow has been extended i'll take an x-ray of the child and here you can see a very good reduction in the ap view has been achieved now uh, it is a dictum that in type 3 supracondylar fracture we have to put three pins so i'll be putting my third pin from the uh, from the lateral uh, side only and i'll be trying to put it again parallel to the uh, the first to, to the first two wires that i have put so here i'm palpating the bony uh, structure to begin my drilling of the k wire and once i've got it i'll drill through the distal fragment into the proximal fragment this tactile feedback during pin insertion is very important as it confirms the intraosseous cushion of the pin so once the distal cortex has been achieved I will take another view and uh, this time it will be an AP view of the of the elbow and you can see that all the wires are parallel to each other and a good reduction has been achieved. Now we will take the lateral view and, uh, and in the lateral view here you can see that uh, the wires look very decent and a good reduction has been achieved. So once uh, the three wires have been put, we'll cut the wires and we will bend it. So the K wires are cut individually and they are bent individually as well. So this will be the bending of the K wires. What I do after putting all my K-wires is that I pull upon each K-wire individually so as to get a resistance. That will confirm the, the secure fixation of the K-wires across the fracture. Now once that has been achieved, we'll do the pin site uh, antiseptic dressing. Now we shall apply an above elbow plaster of uh, Paris back slab and uh, the elbow will be kept in supination with a flexion of uh, around any angle between 45 to 90 degrees. So a look back at the fracture before and after the surgery. So this was a K-wire fixation for supracondylar fracture with three lateral K-wires. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, kindly like, subscribe, share and comment. Thanks for watching.